Sofia, Bulgaria. How expensive is it? So we've heard really good things about Sofia online through other digital nomad communities. So we really wanted to go there and explore this city for ourselves. And overall, we found Sofia to be very clean. It's a very pretty city and also quite affordable. So before I get into this video, I'll just list all the usual disclaimers that I have. So first up, everything will be in US dollars as that's sort of a universal currency. And then of course, everything will be listed as a couple. As I usually say, I'm traveling with my partner. So don't freak out when the grocery bill comes and it's massive. That is because we're traveling as two. And the current exchange rate is one US dollar equals to 180 lev. Our most expensive cost as always was accommodation. So this month we spent a total of $675. We got a really great deal on our Airbnb this month because we were the first customers so the owner cut the price down about 40%. So the Airbnb had two rooms as opposed to the usual one bedroom Airbnb that we get and all utilities were included so that's things such as power, gas, internet and water. And yes, the water was drinkable at this Airbnb and it is throughout all of Bulgaria. Our apartment was in really close walking distance to all of the transport stops. We had about two or three supermarkets in the neighborhood, convenience stores, parks, and even shopping centers. So yeah, it was a really great place for us to be because everything was right at our doorstep. The Wi-Fi was quite decent, nowhere near as fast as what we experienced in Bucharest. On average, our download was 31 and our upload was about 15. So I think that's really good because you don't really need extremely high speeds for most things and I teach English online and I don't even need that much so it worked perfectly for us. So if you're looking at booking on Airbnb while in Sofia, you can get an average room per night for about 18 to 30 dollars. However, if you were looking to book through a local and you were going to stay for long term in Sofia, on average, in the city centre, you can get a one bedroom apartment for $295. And then if you wanted an apartment a little bit further out of the city centre, it would cost about $223. US And then for all of your basic utilities such as electricity, heating, water etc that will cost you on average about $95 for the month. Public transport is definitely the most affordable way to get around Sofia. So for a one-way ticket it's 90 cents and then for an all-day pass it's $2.25 and then for a monthly pass for all lines it's $28. So you can buy the tickets all around town at the ticket booths which are usually located close by to the main stops and the transport there comes quite frequently. We used Google Maps to help us catch the public transport and we found it to be quite effective and not only is it easy to catch transport in Sofia but also it's just really cool to look at. The trams you'll notice in Sofia are really retro looking so I think even if you don't need to get anywhere just jump on one of the trams it's definitely an experience itself. Sofia does not have Uber so you'll need to use an app called Taxi Me Client. I think that's how we found it on the application store and it's all in acrylic so it's a little bit hard to read and so far we found it really easy to use but when we arrived to Plovdiv it was quite difficult. I don't know if it's as widely used in Plovdiv but in Sofia even though you can't read it we actually managed to use the app quite well. Our total cost of transport for the month was $9.20. So as you can see, we really didn't use transport that often. We mostly just walked everywhere, catching the occasional tram or bus. And it, we got really lucky because our Airbnb was close to everything, so this made it super handy for us. Plus, it was really good fitness walking everywhere too. It's really quite affordable dining out in Sofia. Oftentimes we eat at home on weekdays, but on the weekends, this is the time that we dedicate to eating all of the local foods. 
Preferably, we like going to lower kind of mid-range restaurants because we feel like these are the places where you're going to get more local experiences. Bulgarian cuisine is quite tasty. I think one of my favorite dishes we tried was actually the Shopska salad. Uh, I never thought I'd say that having a salad was my favorite dish in a country, but it was. They also do really good kebabs, which is like the caseless sausage. The beers were great, and they have an interesting alcohol called rakia. They even do a variation of tripe soup. So yeah, there's just lots of things to try, and we thoroughly enjoyed eating out in Sofia. I especially liked the restaurant and pub scene there. There's lots of little restaurants that you wouldn't know that they're down a certain road unless you'd Googled it. So yeah, it was, it was quite an experience for us and we had such a fun time. Okay, so the total cost of eating out for the month was $181. We really love cooking at home because it kind of gives us a balance and just helps us to be healthy on the weekdays rather than just eating what we feel like all the time. Um, so we stayed right up the road from a Lidl. It was only about 10 minutes walk from our house. They also have Kofland. Or you could go to another one called Fantastico. We didn't actually go there, but I did hear some reviews about that place online. Our total cost of groceries for the month was $172. And I think that's a great price because we definitely don't skim on our grocery shops. We usually come home with a lot of meat that's high in protein, fruit and veggies, and just everything that we would want. You'll find in Bulgaria that food products like dairy are much more affordable. So when you come to Bulgaria, definitely try their yogurt. It's got a special bacteria in it that can only be found in Bulgaria. And it's called Lacto-Bulgaris, I think. And cheeses are really delicious. You need to try a cheese called Sirene cheese. It's a very nice salty cheese. If you go to the local markets, you will find the best, some of the best prices for fresh produce. So I can highly recommend checking out the ladies market and central market, which are located in the city center of Sofia. So I'll link a video above from the day that we visited these markets for you to go and check out. And these are some of the prices that you can find at the grocery stores here. We just bought one sim card since Carlos actually had a sim card from Romania that he was still using roaming data from. So we went with a company called A1 and we got a total of 15 gigabytes for 15 lev which was $8.60 and the speeds were decent enough. We mostly just use our sim cards these days for GPSing things. So yeah this was plenty of gigabytes for one month. And as for the gym, I do my workouts from home as I usually do, but Carlos, he signed up to a gym membership a little bit too late this month, so he paid $12 for one week, which I think is a bit pricey. But if he had signed up in advance, he could have got one for about $30 for the month. And his gym was nothing special again, it was a few stories, and I think it just had basic equipments and just enough space to do your workouts from. And miscellaneous, we spent a total of $18.80. So all up total for the whole month, we spent 1,077 US dollars. So I think that's really good. And that's probably one of our more affordable months in Europe actually. So that was really quite good. If you are traveling to Europe now or in the near future, then I highly recommend you to use Flixbus. They are a great budget company to use and they're very comfortable. We quite often use them from city to city and even country to country. So if you wanted to check them out, look in my link below. Also, if you're looking for a good travel insurance company to go with, then I highly suggest that you use World Nomads. They have a great insurance plan and they offer very good emergency support. And I can say that for myself because I used them in Malaysia when I needed stitches for my finger at the beginning of my travels. And they answered all of my questions and calls straight away. So if you wanted to check out either of these companies, make sure to check them out in my link below. And for those of you who actually do use 
use the links I'm very grateful for this because anything that you use I receive a small commission off so thank you again to everyone who has used these links and if you enjoyed watching my cost of living videos you can make sure to check them out in my playlist above anyway thank you again for watching and I will see you guys in my next video bye bye